I'd like to welcome you if you're new to the channel. I'm Danny with Escape Power Sports, and today we're going to be expanding on our Commander Maintenance and Upgrade How To Video Series with some budget friendly accessories. So, I've already changed out most of the fluids in this Commander, as well as slapped on these uh, sweet looking cheap lights and went ahead and put on a ProVantage 4500 pound winch. So if you need to see step-by-step how-to videos on any of those jobs, just check out some of the other videos in this Commander series. But in this video, I want to take a look at how to install these cheap side and rear view mirrors I get off Amazon, as well as see what's up with the cheapest roof I could find for this Commander, which happens to be this Tusk soft top. And I figure these are some fairly cheap and easy to install accessories that are going to improve the riding experience of this Commander by allowing us to see behind us while we're backing up off a trailer or when we're riding in groups. Not to mention that Tusk soft top ought to at least keep the sun off. But I find one of the best ways to improve the way these machines perform is just throwing on some fresh tread. So let's get this job started by replacing these worn out bighorns with these uh, new nice looking 28 inch all terrains. And while I'm installing these wheels and tires on the Commander, I'll go ahead and expand on why having the right tread size and pattern for your machine and conditions is important, as well as how I get these brand new looking tires for relatively inexpensive. But throwing wheels and tires on a bike ain't nothing but a quick and easy one beer job, so let's get started. So changing the wheels on your UTV is typically a very easy job. And I like to get started by chalking the other tires and knocking the four 17mm lug nuts loose before jacking the machine up by the frame and not any of the smaller, more fragile suspension components. Then it's as simple as removing those four 17mm lug nuts to remove the old wheel and replace it with the fresh tread before torquing the lugs to the 74 foot-pounds specified by BRP in this machine's operator's guide. And I know these tires look impressive and expensive, which they are. But I picked all four of them up for only 200 bucks used off Craigslist and only paid about 7 bucks each to get them mounted and balanced at the tire shop. So if you're like me and on a really tight budget, patiently checking the local classifieds and even Facebook marketplace is a great way to find used wheels and tires for these machines without breaking the bank. But wherever you end up buying uh, tires for your machine, there are a few things worth mentioning about off-road tires to keep in mind when picking out a set for your machine, budget, and riding environment. One of the first things to consider might be the tread design and size of the tires you're looking for. These days you can find a tread design to meet the demands of almost any riding environment, but I find that the all-terrain tires provide a great all-around traction for the rocky, dirt, gravel, sand, snow, and icy trails I ride on, and provide a substantially smoother ride than some of the mud-oriented tires I've put on a lot of machines in the past. And as far as sizing, you'll notice a series of numbers on the sidewall of your tire. The first number typically shows how tall the tires are, with the middle number designating the width and the last number showing the wheel size the tire will be mounted on. And don't worry, if you want a tire that's wider than your wheels, it is possible to get those mounted on there. But be aware that that extra rubber hanging out past the wheel will be prone to pinch flats and sidewall punctures. Also, I recently found out that the R in front of that last number designates the tire as a radial tire and isn't short for R as in rim. And I'm not really sure if that's a good thing or even really what a radial tire is, but if you are, comment below so we can all add that little bit of knowledge to the toolbox in between our ears. Another thing worth checking for before you uh, swipe your card on a set of tires is the ply rating, which I believe designates the strength and load capacity of the tire. And the ply rating is typically printed on the sidewall just like the size, or it's designated with stars, each star representing two ply. So these tires are some pretty tough four star, eight ply tires. But all that size and strength does come at the expense of some additional weight, which I definitely noticed out on the trails. But that's why this Commander came from the factory with tri-mode power steering and an 82 horsepower 1000cc Rotax V-Twin to put all this additional traction to good use. Can I get an amen? The last thing I want to mention about off-road tires might be one of the most critical aspects of tire performance, and that is the tire pressure. As tempting as it is to just set it to the max cold PSI labeled on the sidewall, in this case 18 psi that's apparently just the pressure to set the bead to the rim and for optimal performance we need to find the sticker on the machine or check the operator's guide for the correct psi but i'm curious to know so comment below what uh tire pressure seems to work best for you and your riding environment and the tire shop must have thought these all terrains were going on a truck as they had over 30 pounds of pressure when i got them back which would explain why the bike felt really top heavy 
twitchy at speed and like it might tip over in every corner before I remember to check the tire pressure and lower it to the correct PSI. <laughs> Anyway, with all that being said, I really hope you found some of this off-road tire information helpful. And if you did, do me a quick favor and give this video a thumbs up. But it looks like I'm having some trouble getting that last lug nut off, so let's see what the issue is. Alright y'all, so this wheel and tire change was going great. Got the old ones kind of scattered around the yard there. And the new ones are going on easy and looking good. That was until I got to this back right. And if you look down here, we got a broken stud, so you might want to subscribe. If you want to see a how-to video on that because it looks like I'm gonna have to replace those studs shouldn't be too hard just probably got to pop the hub off some kind of way and hammer out the old ones and put new ones on but the real issue is over here on the back left and this stud is either stripped or it's spinning with the lug nut it's doing something kind of weird I can't get it off not exactly sure what the plan is on this yet but we'll figure it out and let you know how we get it off there all right y'all so the issue is whenever you're turning this last lug nut the reason it ain't coming out I don't know if I can get back here and show you all is because the stud itself is spinning. There's a couple ways to address it. And really the very first thing I tried was to hold the back of this spinning stud with some beefy pliers, which didn't work at all. Um, the first thing we're going to try is actually to cut a little groove there on the back of the stud and see if we can't hold it still with this big ass screwdriver. And we'll give that a shot and then uh, go from there. But it was really tight inside this wheel, even with the tilt bed up. And I wasn't able to cut a straight or deep enough groove to hold that stud with that big ass screwdriver. And as sketchy as this method was, after a couple attempts of almost getting it, I'm convinced someone with a little more skill and a steadier hand could get it out that way. But with that not working for me, I moved on to the next method Google suggested, which was to tack that stud to the hub with a welder. <laughs> that fucking broke immediately. Well, turns out I'm not a very good welder. Let's try that again. And I'm not very good at welding. And the beads for my $79 Harbor Freight flux core kept breaking. Dude, that weld's holding. Fuck yeah. Oh yeah, it's working. Haha! <laughs> She's free! Hold on. Oh no! It broke up! Uh. So I was about to resort to trying to break the stud off by putting a big socket and a breaker bar on the lug and hitting it with a heavy sledgehammer when I decided to give that welder just one more shot. <laughs> Alright, well that, that there's done. Got a wheel off, only took an hour. Alright y'all, so the $70 Harbor Freight welder was able to throw a uh, little tack on the back of this stud well enough to get the lug nut off the front. So now I can go right back to putting our uh, new wheels and tires on and get back to this video. I'll probably leave that one empty uh, and like I said, go ahead and subscribe if you want to see how to change the studs because we'll definitely be doing that now. Um, but I'll probably leave the lug off this one until we can get that stud replaced. Anyway, we'll get right back to it. Alright y'all, so I finally got all these four wheels mounted up, even those ones with the wacky studs in the back. But anyway, those 28s uh, look awesome and the all-terrain is just barely clear back here in the back. So we're going to go test them, make sure they don't rub, but I think they're going to work perfect. But let's move on to all these mirrors I was telling y'all we were going to throw on this bike. And let's start with these folding side mirrors. As you, see, as you can see, I've already got the driver side mounted up. And I got these mirrors for about 20 bucks on Amazon. I think they work pretty good for the money. Anyway, they come with a couple different mounts. Uh, for this bike, we'll end up using just the biggest roll cage mount and a little rubber gasket tail pulled it on there. And if you'll notice, there's a, uh, I'm trying to show it in the light here, there's a four millimeter Allen on the inside of this. And what that lets you do is kind of tilt it, you know, up or down, uh, depending on the angle of your roll cage. And then they'll just bolt together with these five millimeter Allens here. So let's just get right to it. So I like to start mounting these cheap side mirrors by just adding the correct size clamp mount and the rubber spacer to prevent those annoying rattles to the roll cage first. Then I just adjust the angle of the mirror so it's straight up and down, even when mounted to our angled roll cage, by loosening the four millimeter Allen bolt I just mentioned and turning the base to the desired angle. And since I already had that driver side mirror where I wanted it, I just measured from the top of the roll cage to that mirror to make sure this side ended up at the same height before sliding in the five millimeter Allen spacers and securing them with the five millimeter Allen bolt lock washer and washer and I find these side mirrors very helpful when backing the machine up and even more helpful if you'll angle them down when you're out on the trail to show the rear tires navigating around sharp rocks or branches or something like that and I know a potential concern with these side mirrors is that they could get knocked off on narrow trails 
but since they fold all the way in and are so cheap, I really ain't all that worried about it. And they do look a little clunky and cheesy and do vibrate a little more, especially compared to some of the higher quality mirrors on the market. But from a functionality per dollar standpoint, I consider them to be a pretty good value for the money. All right, y'all, so I got those side mirrors mounted up and they are looking pretty sweet and they work really well from the driver's seat. And I was gonna install this sweet looking 15 inch uh, rear view mirror, but I forgot I probably ordered that for a Razor because it's only got a mount for one point. 75 inch roll cage instead of our full two on this K&M. So we'll probably just go with this other generic uh, rear view mirror I had laying around that's got all these different uh, clamps for any size roll cage. So let's get right to bolting it up. And to install this $13 rear view mirror, I started by popping the ball end of the included bolt into the ball housing on the back of the mirror. And secured it with the provided Phillips screws and nuts that just connect the housing around the ball. And it's probably best to wait to fully tighten those all the way down until it's already on the bike and adjusted to the correct angle. Then I just popped the included clamp onto the roll cage and secured the mirror by tightening down the included 10 millimeter nut and washer. And this mirror is definitely a lot easier to install and adjust before we put that roof on. And I find the wide angle of this mirror to be great for seeing what's on the trail behind us at a glance, especially when riding in groups. All right, y'all, so we got that rear view mounted up uh, mirror, and it, it, it works pretty good. Now you'll be able to see your uh, buddy and his razor way behind you while you're going down the trail. <laughs> I'm kind of kidding, of course. We got a player's flag in the shop as well as the Can-Am. But anyway, uh, BRP does a pretty uh, good job of providing the passengers with some good uh, oh shit handles for whenever you're flying down the trail. There's a couple over here, but there's not much in the way for the driver to grab onto other than the steering wheel. So I figure we'll throw on a couple extra grab handles uh, on this machine. They come in a pack of four on Amazon for 20 bucks, so that's five dollars each. So let's go ahead and I would say bolt, but let's go ahead and strap those on real quick. And I think these grab handles are pretty convenient since they can easily be installed anywhere on any size roll cage without any tools. All right, y'all, so we're gonna go in through the bottom. Hope you can see there, I'm going in through the bottom. And once you get it through the bottom, just come back around out through the top. And then you should be able to ratchet them on down, just like so. But I do like to trim the excess Velcro strap with some scissors for a cleaner fit. All right, y'all, as you can see, I already got the uh, grab bars mounted up and of course our side and rear view mirrors under there somewhere. But anyway, so now it's time to deal with the roof. And if y'all saw our light bar video where I showed how we installed all these lights on the machine, you know I wanna build a custom roof for this uh, bike for this machine out of metal and have an actual hard roof that'll actually protect us through the elements. But unfortunately, just because of a matter of time and money and I really wanna to get to our how to build a woodshed series because I've already uh, got the poles in a decent spot laid out for it. And just because I wanna to get to that woodshed series as quick as possible, we're just gonna go ahead and bolt on this $65 Tusk soft top and see how it performs for the money, you know? It shouldn't be too bad. It might uh, have to be removed whenever we go on long trips at 80 miles an hour and my rip off. Only one way to find out, so let's go ahead and uh, bolt that sucker up real quick and see how that goes. All right, y'all, before we go ahead and show exactly how to install this roof, there are a couple uh, disclaimers, if you will, that I kind of want to talk about this Tusk soft top roof. First being the uh, overall product seems to be made of a fairly high quality uh, material. You know, that, that that's not a bad fabric in my opinion. But Tusk does say we have to go ahead and t remove it and reinstall it every time we want to uh, transport it on an open trailer. And that wouldn't be too bad if it was all just a bunch of clips like this. But having to undo these and then all the strapping going all the way around the inside every time you want to go somewhere seems kind of a pain in the ass to me. But I suppose that just comes with the territory on a soft top. And after only 100 miles on the trail and probably not even 50 miles on the highway, you can see it does have just the slightest sag. I'm sure I could maybe tighten it up a little bit. But just keep that in mind if you're going to be storing this thing outside. I'm assuming it's going to collect water up here and that'll just further the problem of the sag so you might want to either keep it inside or take the top off when you're storing it uh just my thoughts on that and this map pouch on the interior the top with this uh, little zipper and then the velcro to see through it is pretty sweet other than a couple of the reviews i read online said these can fill up with water as well so um something else to be aware of i suppose but really no major complaints as far as i'm concerned at least so far on this 65 dollars soft top that's just something some things i've noticed or was thinking about that i just want to be 100 percent 
up front on this channel as far as the products we're kind of showing here definitely not the highest quality top by any means there's some awesome hard tops out there but for 65 bucks shit it'll keep the sun off at least so to install this 65 dollar soft top i just started by loosely positioning it in place on top of the machine all right y'all so i was going to throw this roof on i got it kind of hung up and it looks like the front uh secures to this bolt on the roll cage i'm not sure if you can see it there and these roll cage bolts were actually a torx t50 star bolt and my torque set only went up to T45. So today was another day where I was really grateful to have such great neighbors and was able to borrow a Torx T50 socket. But you can bet I'll be ready next time because I found one of these Torx T50s on Amazon for just a couple bucks. And all that's to say just to be aware that you will need a Torx 50 socket to install this roof. And of course that roll cage bolt seemed to be too big to fit through that fabric hole. So I just ate it out a little bit with the drill being real careful not to take too much material so the bolt would actually hold it down. And the instructions for the roof did say to remove both these bolts and mount the straps to the bottom bolts. But being out of thread locker and unable to find the torque specs for these critical bolts, I figure I'd fuck with the structural integrity of this cage less by just mounting the straps to the top bolts. Then I wrapped the straps around the back of the roll cage and tightened the whole roof up as best I could with the velcro straps that secured on the sides and the front to the roll cage. So I hope you found some of this information helpful when it comes time to install some cheap mirrors, roof, or tires on your Can-Am Commander. And if you did, do me a quick favor and give the video a thumbs up so I'll know we're on the right track here. And as always, if you have any thoughts or suggestions on how I can improve these videos, or really any comments on this cheap accessory topic in general, please leave a comment in the section below. I'd love to hear from you. And on a serious note, I'd really like to thank the 500 or so of y'all who found some of the how-to content on this channel and decided to subscribe. Y'all keep watching and commenting on these videos, and I'll keep trying to make them better every single time. And for those of y'all who are following along, those are beers number 128 through 133 on our way to finishing the Escape Power Sports 1000 Beer Challenge. So I'd encourage you to consider subscribing to this channel so you don't miss any of the rest of the maintenance videos coming out in this Commander series over the course of those 1000 beers. I'm Danny with Escape Power Sports. I really want to thank y'all for watching. And until next time, we'll see y'all on the trails.